Hello everyone, Wet the Jamaica here. Welcome to this updated video on the other crash Jamaica and the rest of the Caribbean. It is Sunday evening, November 26, 2023. Now before we jump into it, please ensure that you guys like the video, share it, subscribe and tap notification bell so that you'll be notified every time I post a brand new video. Feel free to leave a comment down in the comment section letting me know what the that's been like in your year recently. Also feel free to ask any other related question that you might have about the future of the in your specific area. Alright, so let us take a look at Atlantic hurricane and tropical storm activity throughout the year and where we're currently located. So we can see that we're getting very close to the month of December and we can see the yellows that represent hurricane activity very much dwindling at this time. Not to mention the tropical st storm activity as well dwindling as we take a look at this bar graph. So we're definitely wrapping up what's left of the Atlantic hurricane season. As it relates to the typical tracks and origins for the month of November, we usually see them developing across the central and western Caribbean right there to the west of Jamaica. And then they would usually move to the north and then towards the north east. As it relates to the last couple decades in terms of tropical storm formation across the Atlantic within this time period from November 21 to November 30. We can tell we have those red dots. That's definitely where we've been having these systems form. So we can see the Southern and Western Caribbean and we've had some here and there across the Central Atlantic. As it relates to what the U.S. National Hurricane Center is showing on their seven-day graphical tropical weather look, we can see that there is no new tropical cyclones that are expected within, within the next seven days. As it relates to the surface map of the Atlantic for this evening, we can still see that the Atlantic is being dominated by ridges of high pressure that's sending all of those easterly trade winds across the main development region into the Caribbean. We can also see some broken lines right here associated with some troughs affecting portions of the Eastern Caribbean, another trough affecting portions of the Dominican Republic. And if we take a look at the visible satellite images before the sun went down, we can see the clouds associated with that trough to the east of the Caribbean for the most part, but it's already affecting sections of the Windward Island, sections of Grenada, maybe Barbados, Trinidad and Tobago with some amount of overcast skies and rainfall. We can also see the clouds associated with that other trough affecting portions of southern Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic. We can also see that flow from east to west with that low level clouds, all courtesy of that high pressure ridge. We'll be talking more about the weather across the Caribbean later on. Let us focus our attention on the prediction that was made in yesterday's video about the weather across Jamaica for today, Sunday. It was stated that we would have had some early morning rainfall across eastern Jamaica on a Sunday. And we know when we're talking about eastern Jamaica, we're talking about those parishes in the county of Surrey. So sections of Kingston, St. Andrew, if not sections of Portland and St. Thomas. And what ended up happening? As early as 2.05 a.m., we had the infrared satellite images being posted to our Twitter page, not only our Twitter page, but our Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok page. So if you're on, of the, if you're on one of those social media platforms, please ensure that you follow us there, where we make some mini posts that are not made here on our YouTube channel. So we can see those grays that represent some clouds coming into sections of St. Thomas and Portland this morning, even spilling into sections of St. Mary as well. So this indeed confirms the early morning rainfall that was predicted. And if we take a look at what happened throughout the day before the sun went down, we can see that for the most part it was a sunny day. Most of the clouds were across inland areas of some central parishes. So southern St. Anne, northern St. Catherine, northern St. Andrew, spilling into section of Kingston, northern St. Elizabeth, southern St. James, definitely gotten on some amount of overcast skies and some isolated shores. And we still have some of that still affecting portions of northern St. Elizabeth, southern St. James as we speak with some of those grids that represent some amount of cloud cover. And we can see the rainfall that represents all of that right now across the western area right there on the Cuban Doppler images. 
the greens that represent that light to mother rainfall across maybe southern St. James, northern St. Elizabeth. And if we take a look at the Caribbean Institute for Meteorology and Hydrology's accumulated precipitation for the past 24 hours, we can see that it does indeed paint a picture of where we had that rainfall today. So definitely the early morning rainfall across eastern Jamaica spilling into some northern portion of the island. And that rainfall that we're having right now across sections of southern St. James spilling into sections of Hanover. As related to the temperatures right now, we can see that we have 26 degrees Celsius in both Montego Bay and Kingston. And by about 3 a.m. on Monday, the temperature should dip down to about 25 degrees Celsius in Montego Bay and 22 degrees Celsius in Kingston. As to this, the temperature forecast for Monday, this map from the GFS is showing 18 day on Monday, which is actually 1 p.m. on Monday. And we can see Jamaica embedded in some yellows, gold, and some slight orange colors. And we can see by the key on the right that that's representative of anywhere from 1 to at least 3 degrees Celsius above normal temperatures. And we know the normal temperatures for the month of November across Jamaica are about 88 degrees Fahrenheit. And when we take a look at the thermometer, 88 degrees Fahrenheit is about the same as 30 degrees Celsius. So we should be receiving anywhere from 30 to 33 degrees Celsius for the temperatures across Jamaica for Monday. As to relate to the dry ear map, we can see a lot of dry ear as represented by the key at the bottom. Yellows, oranges, reds, and whites within those reds. We can see Jamaica embedded in some yellows and some slight orange colors. So, yes, we have a lot of dry air across the Jamaica era at this time, especially across the Caribbean. As it relates to the Sahara dust forecast, this map is showing 2 p.m. on Monday, and we do see that slight brown colors that represent the Sahara dust, stretching all the way from Africa across the Mendevoma region into sections of the Caribbean. But it is on the low end of the scale in terms of dry air. If we want to see a, a lot of Saharan dust, we have to see those darker shades of brown. And when, when we have those darker shades of brown, that tells us that there's going to be a lot of hazy skies. Some persons as more sinusitis begin, being triggered off. But that's not going to be the case for 2 p.m. on Monday, especially across Jamaica, where we're going to be in the clear. As to so the wave forecast, we can see that surrounding the island we have light blues on the north coast darker shades of blues on the south and the eastern portion of the island and we can see by the key on the bottom right the lighter shades of blues represent 0 0.5 for meter the darker shades of blues represent anywhere from 1 to 1.5 meter wave heights and we see that on both the euro and the gfs for monday's wave forecast as it relates to the wind forecast we can see that we have some amount of northeasterly breeze coming in across the north coast but it is on the low end of the scale in terms of wind speed we see more and we have blue so that's representative of anywhere from five to ten knots it's the waters to the south of the island that are going to be getting in on that easterly flow and we see the greens that represent anywhere from 15 to 20 knots as we can see by the key on the bottom right as well as the rainfall forecast there isn't much rainfall in the forecast at all. We see a lot of whites. This is 9 a.m. Jamaica time for Monday. And that's how it's going to be looking for the entirety of the day. Not much in the way of rainfall at all. It's going to be quite a sunny day. Maybe some partly cloudy conditions expected. And it makes sense that the accumulated precipitation forecast is not showing anything at all either. Only some grays. That's on the low end of the scale as we can see by the key on the right. And both the Euro and the GFS model are in consensus with this. I know that when they're in consensus, the chances of it actually happening are much higher. Either way. We're starting to step into our dry season. We're in the final couple of days before the dry season officially begins in December. So it makes sense that we're already experiencing that dry weather. We can see the bar graph that shows Kingston's rainfall at the top. The bar graph that shows Montego Bay's rainfall at the bottom. Either way, we're starting to, you know, get into our dry season. So ensure that you prepare yourself, conserve on water as much as you possibly can. Because we know how the National Water Commission can get when it comes to those water restrictions. Alright, so that's it for the forecast across Jamaica. Let us focus our attention on the rest of the Caribbean. So we can see a lot of clouds right there associated with the cold front. 
off the southeastern coast of the United States and that could spill into sections of the Caribbean as it pushes towards the south and the east. It's already bringing some amount of overcast sky showers and thunderstorms to sections of Yucatan Peninsula and western Cuba. You can see some clouds right there across sections of Nicaragua. As usual, clouds bring rainfall to sections of Colombia, Venezuela, Guyana, Suriname, French Guyana, sections of Trinidad and Tobago as we speak. And if we take a look at the Doppler radar images of the northeastern Caribbean, you know the Doppler radar images actually show the rainfall as opposed to satellite images that can show cloud cover. And we know that we can have cloud cover over an area not necessarily in rainfall. But we can see that right now, as of 7 p.m., the latest Doppler radar images are showing some amount of greens that represent rainfall across sections of Puerto Rico, sections of Guadeloupe, maybe waters to the north of Guadeloupe as well, maybe affecting sections of Antigua and Barbuda, maybe also affecting sections of St. Martin later on tonight. At least the Barbados radar, we can see some rainfall to the east of Barbados, to the south of Barbados, pushing from east to west, some isolated showers coming in, maybe later on tonight across Barbados, some of that may be affecting sections of Trin Grenada, Trinidad and Tobago, but for the most part it looks to be hit or miss isolated showers. But it's still associated with that trap, so there's still a lot more rainfall to come tonight into tomorrow. We can also see that rainfall across sections of Guyana, sections of the Yucatan Peninsula, and that rainfall across the waters of the Gulf of Mexico that's pushing from west to east into sections of the western coast of Florida. As for this, the temperature forecast, we can see that majority of the United States should be receiving below average temperatures as indicated by those blues and greens. You can see by the key on the right that that's representative of a lot of below normal temperatures even getting down into 5 or 6 or even 7 degrees Celsius below normal. Florida should be getting in at some above normal temperatures as indicated by those oranges. Not to mention the Bahamas, Cuba, Haiti, Dominican Republic, majority of the Western Caribbean, Central America. And we can see some slight below normal temperatures across the northeastern Caribbean, but for the most part it should be average to slightly above average temperatures for majority of the eastern Caribbean. As it relates to the siren dust forecast for 2 p.m. on Monday, majority of the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico should be in the clear. It's only those slight beige colors that represents the low end of the scale in terms of Saharan dust for a section of the Windward Islands. So anywhere from, let's say, St. Lucia, Martinique, southward, Barbados, St. Vincent, and the Grenadines, Grenada, Trinidad, and Tobago, and section of northeastern portions of Venezuela. If we take a look at the wave forecast, we can see that majority of the Caribbean should be getting anywhere from 0 0.5 for meter to 1 meter or 1.5 meter wave heights. We can see the purples that represent 2 meter wave heights or more to the far south of Jamaica. And it makes sense because the winds are going to be strongest right there. You can see that for the most part, majority of the Caribbean should be averaging anywhere from 10 to 20 knots. Well, right where we have the strongest winds and the strongest or the highest waves, as represented by the yellows, that's where we're going to be gusting anywhere from 25 to 30 knots right there off the northern coast of Colombia. And we can see that both the year and the GFS models are in agreement with this. As relates to the rainfall forecast, no, not much rainfall is in the forecast. We see more and more greens and yellows. Most of that usually represents some isolated showers. It's the reds that represent up to an inch of rainfall that could cause some isolated flash flooding. And we see that isolated rainfall in the forecast for sections of the Bahamas, sections of eastern Cuba, the southern portion of Dominican Republic, all courtesy of that trough, maybe even spilling into sections of Haiti, sections of Puerto Rico still to get some more rainfall. You can also see the consensus for that rainfall anywhere from Dominica southward. So Martinique, St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Grenada, Barbados, Trinidad and Tobago. Skipping ahead, looking southward, we're looking for consensus. We don't see the consensus right there across sections of French Guyana. But the Euro model is showing it where sections of Suriname, Guyana, Venezuela, sections of especially southern Colombia, Panama, Costa Rica, Nicaragua, Honduras, not so much rainfall in store for El Salvador, but definitely central and northern Guatemala, 
Belize could get in a small amount of rainfall, sections of the Yucatan Peninsula, and western portions of Cuba. And we know that when both maps are showing the same thing like this, the chances of actually happening are much higher. Alright, so that's it for today. Thanks for watching.